Hey, I'm Andrew, Creative Director at Landing Line, and welcome to the Page Builder. This video will help you get one step closer to being a page building expert. The large area on the left is your canvas. This is where your page will take shape. Your canvas is almost an exact preview of what your page will look like as you build it. The right side of the builder contains three tabs, the components tab, the theme tab, and the meta tab. Whenever you open the builder, the components tab will be selected by default. There are two types of components, containers, which includes sections, rows, and columns, and elements, which includes everything else, things like text, images, and forms. The relationship of containers and elements is very simple. A page can be made up of multiple sections. Sections contain rows, rows contain columns, and columns contain elements. This structure allows you to keep your page very organized, which also enables you to move groups of content around very easily. The next tab in the right pane is the theme tab. The theme tab is a central area where you establish your colors, fonts, and text sizing. Let's go ahead and get started by adding some colors to our palette. It's likely that your company or client will already have brand guidelines. So simply add any colors from those guidelines into the color palette. Great. Now we have our colors. I'm going to leave all the font settings the way they are for now and come back to them after I add some content to the canvas. Let's switch back to the components tab. When I'm creating a new page, I like to start by creating a quick page structure. I suggest using sections to represent different main areas of your page, such as a header, introduction area, features, or a footer. I'm going to drag and drop a row component from our components list and place it under the existing one. Then, I'm going to grab a column and drag and drop it next to the existing column in the second row. Automatically, we now have two equal width columns. If I drag and drop another column, the row now has three columns that are automatically divided equally. If you want columns to be different in width, you can grab the blue handle between any two columns to resize them. You can only have a max number of six columns within a single row. When someone visits our page, we want an attention-grabbing headline that tells the visitor what the main message of the page is. You can double-click on any text in the canvas to open our custom text editor. This headline looks a little lonely though, so let's add a paragraph component and a call to action button. Since components stack on top of one another by default, you don't need to add a row for each component. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's add one as a background image behind our intro section. You can add a background to any container component and even most element components. I'm going to add an image. Meet the Files Cloud. This is where you upload all files and images that you plan to use on your pages. You can click Upload or drag and drop an image from your desktop to upload it to Landing Lion, all hosted for free. I've already uploaded images for this page and placed them inside this folder. Let's select this photo to use as our background image. So far so good, but let's add a color overlay to make that text pop. I'm going to adjust the opacity so we can see the image. You can layer as many backgrounds on a component as you want, making it really easy to add different overlay effects. I'm also going to change the text color to white so we can read the text a little better. The intro is looking pretty good, but we need to add some spacing between the components. First, we're going to add inner spacing on the entire section. After clicking on the section, I can use the green handles found at the top and bottom of the section. By dragging them down or up, I can add inner spacing, ensuring that the design has some room to breathe. I can also use the inner spacing controls in the right pane to fine tune and add inner spacing to multiple sides at once. Now on to spacing out the components. Outer spacing works like inner spacing, but instead of creating space within, you essentially push components away from each other. Click any element once to display the spacing controls. The red handles on the left and right let you change the width of the component. To add top spacing, click and hold, then move the element down. For bottom spacing, grab the bottom handle and drag it down to adjust. Now I want to add a feature section below the introduction. 
I start by dragging a section component onto the canvas under the intro section. Next, I'm going to add another headline component to label this section. I want to show three main features that my company has to offer, so a three column row would work great here. Luckily, I already created a three column row earlier that is still in the intro section. By default, your cursor will automatically grab a component when you click on it, but sometimes an element or container is blocking the column row or section that you're trying to select or move. To help you, we've created the select tools found at the very top of the canvas. By switching the select tools, you can control exactly which type of component your mouse will select. I want to make sure I'm selecting a row, so I'm going to set it to rows. To move any component, click and hold and drag the component to pick it up. Now I can place this row into our feature section underneath the row with the feature text. I'm going to drag an image component over to the first column. I'm going to select this icon to use for our first feature image. You can resize the image by grabbing the handle in the bottom right corner, but the size for this icon is just right for me. I'm also going to add a headline and paragraph component under the image. We now have one feature out of three. Rather than repeat all those steps, we can easily duplicate the first feature column to create the rest. We're going to change our select tool to column. First, I'm going to delete the two empty columns. Then, click the remaining feature column once. Now, we can use the duplicate button found at the top right of the builder. Clicking the duplicate button twice magically creates three identical columns. I'll now replace the images and edit the text to display the rest of the features I want to showcase. Our page is just about done, but I'm not liking my color choices or fonts anymore. To quickly and easily change this, we go back to the theme tab. When I edit the colors in my palette, I instantly see the changes take effect in our canvas. Every element using these selected colors will automatically update, so I don't have to painstakingly edit them one by one. Let's choose some different fonts too. This page is done and ready to be shown to the world. There's only one more thing to do. Click the green publish button here. Our page is now live. Now that my page is live, I can A-B split test, watch user sessions, and view data that will help me optimize my future pages. I hope this video helped you get one step closer to being a page building expert. You can always watch this video again and more tutorials like it on our Landing Lion YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and start building.